The first cranial nerve we're going to test is going to be cranial nerve number one, uh, the olfactory nerve. And in testing this, I want you to identify the smell, identify the fact that you can smell something, and if you can, identify what it is that you're smelling. I want you just to block your right hand side of your nose, and I'm going to just hold, close your eyes, and just hold this substance up. Can you smell something? Mm-hmm. And can you identify what you're smelling? Coffee. That's correct. Okay, but just the other side, I want you then to block your left side of your nose, close your eyes, and again, see if you can identify this smell. Smell something? Yes. And what do you smell? Lemon. And looking at the second optic nerve, we're going to do three different tests. We're going to look for visual acuity, we're going to look for visual acuity, we're going to look at visual fields, and then we're going to actually directly visualize the nerve head, the optic nerve head, as we look back at the fundus. The, and during the visual acuity, I want you to wear your reading glasses and hold this card over your right eye. And then we're going to use the pocket Snell and chart, and I want you to actually to hold this in your own hand so it's comfortable at your uh, length of uh, focus for you. And read the smallest line. Which line can you read? The smallest one. Can you read the bottom one? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and just read the numbers. 428739. That's correct. Very good. Now go ahead and switch eyes. You got to go ahead and hold the card. And which line can you read? The smallest one. The smallest one again. Okay, go ahead and read those numbers. 428739. Very good. In looking for visual fields, I want you, we're first going to do a, a very general screening test. I want you to look at my nose. Is there any symmetry or any aspect of my face that, face that doesn't look the same on one side or the other? No. Okay. I'm going to hold my hands up. Do you see my hands on both sides? Yes. Do they look about the same? Yes. How about here? Yes. And how about up into here? Yes. Okay. We're going to test each eye individually, and there's several ways that we can screen as far as visual fields. I want you to go ahead and just hold the card over your right eye, and I'm going to hold up a grid, and I want you just to look at the center dot on that grid, and just tell me if there's any variation in the pattern. Does it all look the same or different? It's all the same. All the same. Very good. The next way we're going to screen, go ahead, the same, hold it up, uh, and we're going to continue to look at the uh, left eye. I'm going to hold up one finger or two fingers, one side or the other side, or, or just count the number of fingers I hold up, okay? And again, watch my nose and through the side of your eyes, look and see if you can identify the number of fingers being held up. One, one and one. Very good. One. Very good. One and one. Very good. One. One and one. Very good. Another way that we can screen as far as visual fields is again to have you look at my nose. And I'm going to start with the contact applicator outside of your field of vision. And I want you, again, as soon as you catch it through the side vision, tell me now. But keep watching my nose. As soon as you see it, say now. Now. Good. Again, as soon as you see it, say now. 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 Good. And keep watching my nose. As soon as you see it. Now. Very good. Now let's go ahead and switch to the other eye. We're going to go through the same maneuvers. Look at the very center dot of the grid. Mm -hmm. Any difference on either side no. in any portion of it? No. Good. And watch my nose. As you see the fingers move or count them and indicate which hand. One. Okay. One and one. Very good. One. One and one. Okay. One and one. One. Very good. And again, watching my nose. So as you identify the contact applicator comes from the side, say now. 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 Very good. I'm going to look at the back of your eye. And I want you to look ahead. But then I want you to turn a little bit out and just look right there. And hold really still. And I'm going to look back and look at the optic nerve head and looking at the disc margin looking at the vessels, comparing the veins to the arterioles, looking for venous pulsations, look at the background, and then come and looking at the fovea. Very good. We're going to move to the left side. I want you again to look a little bit out to the right and look right there. Keep watching there even though I get in your way. And again, going through and looking at the same structures. Very good. The next test we're going to do is actually look at the pupillary light reflex. The afferent limb 
for this is going, or the sensory limb is going to be the optic nerve, and the efferent limb, the motor limb, is going to be the ocular motor. And so what we want you to do is just take a, a look right there, and I want you to, again, just keep looking over there. We're going to look at the direct, as well as the consensual. We're over here to the direct and consensual, both coming out equally. And now we're going to do the swinging flashlight test. We're going to go from one eye to the other eye, back and forth. Both people stay down. There's no evidence for a deafferented people or a sensory defect. So that's good. That's fine. In testing cranial nerves number three, four, and six, we actually do them together. And the first thing we're going to do is just look for ocular alignment. And I want you to just get, again, look right here and look straight ahead. And we're just going to look at our eyes. Any double vision? No. Anything like that. Look at the eyelids for any evidence for ptosis and see the light reflection uh, is in the same place for both pupils. Very good. Now, what I want you to do is I want you just to follow the tip of the Q-tip wherever it's going to go. Okay, we're gonna, I'm going to open your eyes a little bit. Okay, watch it over here. Watch it up. Watch it come down. Watch it come over here, up, and down, and back to the midline. Very good. Test each eye individually. Cover this eye. And again, you hold your eye open just a little bit. Good. I watch it come out. Look up the sphere rectus, down inferior rectus, out lateral rectus, coming across medial rectus, up the um, inferior oblique, coming down and in the superior oblique, coming back. Very good. I'm going to switch eyes. Do the same thing. Again, watching here. Watch it come out, up, down, come back, up, and down, coming back. Very good. The next series of tests actually look at the control of eye movements, what we call supranuclear gaze systems or ocular motor systems. They, all of these systems are designed to keep the object being imaged focused right on the fovea where you have maximal vision. The first one we're going to look at is saccades. And I'm going to just put, can you see my two fingers stand up right now? Okay. And I want you not to move your head, but just your eyes. And look at the finger that's moving. And go back and forth and you see a movement in the finger, okay? Good. 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 The next system we're going to look, is smooth, look at is smooth pursuit movements. And I want you to follow, again, just with your eyes, no head movement, the tip of the contact applicator. And I want you to go wherever it goes. We can test the same system by using the optokinetic tape, which has various uh, shapes. And what I want you to do is I want you to look at each new shape as it comes and appears. So looking right here, keep watching as we move it to the right. And now we're going to move it to your left. Keep watching right here. Very good. And we're going to move it up. Again, watching the new object as it appears. And we're going to move it down. Again, watch the new object. Very good. The third um, motor control, ocular motor control system is going to be that of the ocular motor reflex. I want you to look at that point right at the very distant part of the wall. Keep it focused right there and don't move your eyes. Keep focused and I'm going to turn your head quickly but you keep looking over there. Go up and down. The last system we're going to test is that of virgins, and we're going to actually test uh, convergence. And this is the near triad, which will consist of uh, convergence of the eyes and pupillary constriction, and one part of it you're not going to get to see, and that would be accommodation. But I want you to focus right here. I'm going to hold your eyes up just a little bit so you can see this better. Keep watching it as it comes in. Stay focused on the tip of the Q-tip. Very good. We'll do one more time. You can see the convergence 
in the pupillary constriction. I mean, good. The next cranial nerve that we're going to test is cranial nerve number five. We're going to first test the sensor division of the cranial nerve number five, and we're going to test it with light touch, and we're going to test all three divisions of the uh, trigeminal nerve. So first of all, can you feel that up here in your forehead? Yes. Over here? Yes. This is feeling about the same? Yes. So we're testing the maxillary division, I mean the ophthalmic division. We're testing here, same on both sides, uh -huh. the maxillary division, same on both sides, yes. the mandibular division. Now testing it with sharp, again the same divisions. Does that feel sharp over here? Yes. Over here? Yes. It feels about the same? Yes. Here and here? Yes. And does it feel sharp here and here? Yes. Okay. The other test we do for sensory for the um, trigeminal is the corneal reflex. The sensory limb of the corneal reflex reflexes, of course, the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. Um, the blink that occurs with the, uh, the sensory phenomenon would be from the obicularis oculi, which would be the seventh cranial nerve. So I want you to look right about my nose. I'm just going to touch the very side, actually the limbus. I'm just going to barely touch it. Just tell me if you feel it. Do you feel that? Mm-hmm. Okay, we get the blink as well. Look over here. Not all the way, just right about there. Good. Just going to very touch the limbus of the corner of the corneal. Did you feel that on both sides? Yeah. Okay. Right. Very good. We're now going to test the motor division. We're going to look at the uh, the muscles of mastication. And I want you to bite down hard. Feel the masseters. Feel the temporalis. Now open your mouth and don't let me push. And we're actually testing the turgoids and there's no jaw deviation. So that's normal. And then the one deep tendon reflex we can test. Um, um, for the for the head is actually the uh, jaw jerk, and in doing this, I want you to open your mouth just a little bit. I'm going to place my thumb on her chin and just tap on the jaw. And typically, we don't see much of a movement. Very good. And we're going to look at the cranial nerve number seven and actually have you lift up your eyebrows, frontalis muscle, very good, and close your eyes really tight, like you have soap in them. Picularis oculi muscles, very good. Don't let me open them. Keep them tight. Good. Okay, open up your eyes. Now I want you to show me all your teeth. I'm going to look at the nasal labial folds. That's fine. Now I want you to puff out your uh, mouth like you're going to kiss or going to blow. Very good. Make your arms. Very good. Now I want you to puff out your cheeks. I pull with air. I'm going to see if there's any air escape. Very good. Now if I were to told you, tell you a funny joke, would you smile? Okay, very good. The sensory division for um, the seventh cranial nerve is actually for taste for the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. I have um, cotton tip applicators that have been soaked in a um, certain solution that should have a taste. And in testing this, I want you to stick out your tongue, hold it out. I'm going to touch one side of your tongue, and I want you to identify what it is you're tasting before you put your tongue back in, and then tell me what it is that you taste, okay? Okay, so we're going to stick your tongue out, all the way out. I'm just going to touch one side. You think you can identify the taste? Mm -hmm. And what is it? Sugar. That's correct. Let's do the other side. Have you stick out your tongue? Again, I'm going to just touch into your tongue, and don't put it back in until you feel like you've been able to identify it, or if you can, okay? It's hot. That's correct. The Eighth cranial nerve, the acoustic nerve, has two divisions. The one that we're going to test today is the eighth, uh, or the uh, uh, cochlear division. And we're going to first test auditory acuity. Do you hear that? Mm -hmm. And what is it that you hear? Your fingers are going to okay. How about over here? Same. Is there any difference between the two sides? No. Okay. We can further test that by doing the Weber-Rene test. The Weber test is actually using a tuning fork, placing it on the forehead, and do you hear that on one side or the other or the middle? In the middle. Good. And then the Rene, we're pl placing it back on the mastoid. Can you hear that? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me when you can no longer hear it? Okay. Can you hear it now? Yes. 
And we should do the same thing for the other side, but another way to use, to screen with her Renee is to ask the patient which is loudest, number one at the mastoid or number two, air conduction. Number two. And that's the correct answer. That would be the normal response. The vestibular division of the acoustic nerve can be tested using the oculocephalic reflex, um, which would be the um, turning the head or the doll's eyes maneuver, which we've already demonstrated. Or if we need to have more detailed testing, we could do ice water calorics and uh, look at the ocular vestibular reflex. For the cranials number 9 and 10, we're going to uh, lump them together and actually look at the palate and the action of the palate and have the patient actually say, ka, ka, ka. Ka, ka, ka. Listen for any type of nasal air escape, say ka, ka, ka again. Ka, ka, ka. And that's normal. We can also actually have them open their mouth, stick out the tongue, tilt it back a little bit, and say, ah. Ah. And watching the action of the palate, say, ah again. Ah. And that's totally normal. The reflex action, we're going to actually look at the gag reflex. Have you open your mouth, tilt your head back just a little bit, good, and it's going to gag you. And it's a good gag, okay. The next cranial nerve that we're going to test is going to be um, uh, cranial nerve number 11. And we're going to look at the action of the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid muscles. I want you to flex your shoulders up like this. Don't let me push them down. Good. And now I want you to turn your head to the left. And we're going to look at her right sternocleidomastoid muscle. Don't let me push her. Chin, good. And I'll go over here to the right. And again, don't let me push. We're going to look at the left sternocleidomastoid muscle. And that's normal. Very good. The last cranial nerve would be the cranial nerve number uh, 12, and I want you to um, stick out your tongue all the way out, comes out of the midline. I want you to go in and out, just back and forth, good, and now side to side without moving, there you go. And then just close your mouth and put your tongue over in this cheek, push it out hard. And now on this side, push it out, good. We can also ask her to say la la la. La la la. And that would be testing number 12. If we then wanted her to say pa pa pa, 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 pa. we'd be testing the uh, the lips, which would be cranial nerve number seven, and then we could go back and have her say ka ka ka, 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 ka. which would be testing number nine and ten.